You got granddads that have been to the penitentiary, dads that are in the penitentiary, and sons in the penitentiary. When they aren't able to participate in their traditional family structure, and they most certainly aren't raising their kids, I think that that is a public health issue and disaster. typical profile of a guy we'd work with, multiple arrests, maybe multiple convictions, marginal education at best, depression and anxiety. A lot of men who working with, with the network has really been their first true work experience. I'm a crime on me with the network. So, Demasi, how you doing today? Okay, okay, I get out June 8th. June 8th? Yeah. Oh, All right. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you worry about most? Losing my son, you know what I'm saying, and, and being homeless. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The network is basically a community of men doing well. We bring the varying agencies together that allow you to get access to whatever services and things that you might need to be successful upon your release here. The corrections uh, agents, they look at you like, no, wait a minute. You're telling me that on the day they're released, they get housing, the chance to work, they get health care and health insurance, and it's in a supportive community environment? We go, yeah. And they say, well, we don't believe that. Too good to be true. Okay, we at the network, we look at ourselves as the hub. So when you walk in through that door, there it's all available to you. Here we go. Exercise. One, two. We're seven partners. Medica, which is a large health plan. We have two workforce development partners, Twin City Rise and Summon Academy. We have substance abuse treatment providers, uh, RS Eden and Turning Point. The uh, Family Housing Fund helps build affordable housing. They have all those pieces together. We're out to prove that you can get a breakthrough, dramatically different results. If you all were in the ideal circumstances, however you imagine your life being, if, say, if I'm, I'm just straight now, now I'm straight. I'm done with the network, I'm cool, I, I didn't kick my habit, I ain't addicted to no alcohol, no criminal, I'm done. Would you be thinking differently than what you're thinking now? <laughs> if a person want to change, they won't change. Do you really want to change, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm, I'm getting there, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting there. The notion of community is the thread that holds the housing and the work and the health care and the behavioral health. The community experience is what weaves those all together. Well, you know how we do, man. You take a little bit, pass it around, pass it through, huh? It's like we fight in a fight together to get a second chance to go out there and be the man that we're supposed to be. You know, we push each other. You know, our guys are going to go out and encounter all kinds of roadblocks. Oh, you're an ex-con. I'm not going to hire you. You know, all these reasons why society thinks you're going to fail. And you're going to go out and hit that every day. But when you come back here, you can get recharged. You can get renewed. In the corrections world, they rate you uh, by how likely you are to return to prison. For many of these men, the pathway to a more stable life in the community, it's not straight. How do we stay engaged with a man while he's struggling. And there's going to be an area in which we're going to tolerate certain behavior, but if you go beyond that, we can't. You got to be working. If not on our work crew, you got to find a job out in the community. We have set up Better Futures Enterprise to be our business arm. These recycling initiatives we're starting is a way not only to earn income, but provides much needed work for the men. One challenge with any enterprise like this is how do you sustain it financially? The main strategy is convince government, who would be the primary purchasers, that this can get you much better results for a lower price. 
I want to see, instead of it being a net takeaway from the state, I'd like to see those folks out of jail, rehabilitated, and then giving to the state, paying taxes, taking care of their family, not being on the public assistance programs. Here's a way you can hold us accountable. If we don't hit one of those three outcomes, namely they go back to prison or they're not employed or they're not paying child support, we get penalized. That's the form of risk sharing we're proposing. We have about 75% of our men who owe child support paying, which is a phenomenal number. The average for this population is in the mid-teens. All of our men have access to primary health care. All of them are accessing behavioral health services to the extent they may need them. And ultimately, are we reducing the use of expensive institutions? And our initial indicators, at least on return to prison for new crimes, is that our rates are much lower than what the system's experiencing now. A productive wage earning man not only is good for the family, but it's good for our society.